Hi there, I'm Fred Trost. Welcome to Michigan Weekend. And on this edition of Michigan Weekend, we're going to talk about spring right around the corner, which means steelhead fishing to many Michigan anglers. We're going to be going up surf fishing and stream fishing with Gary Marshall from the Michigan Travel Bureau. He knows where they are, how to get them, and he's going to share that with us. Another legendary steelhead fisherman is Emil Dean, who during the spring months is down on the St. Joe River in his very unusual riverboat. We're going to learn about his riverboat as well as his dropback method for steelhead fishing, where he anchors above a steelhead hole, lets the spawn bag roll back through the hole, and he produces some nice fish. We're going to find out about that on this edition of Michigan Weekend, so stay tuned. Michigan Weekend is brought to you in part by Meyer Thrifty Acres, your one-stop shopping store, the place where you can buy all of your sporting goods and outdoor gear at why pay more prices. Now join me in just one minute on the St. Joe River with Emil Dean, but first this message from Meyer. You know, a lot of people ask me, they say, do you really buy your sporting goods at Meyer? Well, you bet I do, and I'll tell you why. Okay, first of all, they have name brand merchandise. Sporting goods department has a huge selection, and Meyer has the lowest prices you're going to find. And another thing, you know, if you get to know the Meyer people in the sporting goods department, you're going to find that they're really nice. Well, I did all my Christmas shopping at Meyer. Of course, I know what I'm looking for in sporting goods, and uh, well, if you know what you want, why pay more? Our fishing adventure on this edition of Michigan Weekend takes us to the St. Joseph River near Benton Harbor, where we team up with well-known Michigan fishing guide, Emil Dean. Emil knows steelhead fishing and is a full-time guide. He gets plenty of practice. Joining us today is another steelhead fishing ace, John Clevenger from Varian Springs. A carpet layer by trade, steelhead fishing is his first love. Well, at least it's very high priority. Now, Emil's riverboat is in a class by itself. 250 horsepower with a marine jet engine, it can scoot down the river at 40 miles an hour. No steering wheel on this boat, the stick controls the direction and the speed. This is an unusual looking watercraft to be sure, but it was designed specifically for river fishing. The problem that many large boats have with navigation in rivers is that sandbars and sunken logs create difficulties. Either the boats are too big and draw too much water, or the rivers have too many shallow spots, depending on your point of view. Well, Emil Dean's river boat doesn't have any problems as long as the water is five or six inches deep. It was designed and built by Joe Kimmerly, a fellow charter boat captain who had a sheet metal shop in Niles a flat-bottomed 22-foot riverboat that has several unusual features. One of the most interesting is the anchoring system that uses no anchors. John doesn't drop an anchor over the side. He drops a long pole that's attached to the bow of the boat. These long poles are called spuds, and Emil's boat has one on each side. They're used in place of anchors, and they actually prop the boat in the water as it faces the current. The sharp ends of the spuds rest on the gunnels at the stern end, while the other end of the spuds are fastened on each side of the bow with specially designed swivel brackets. These brackets have just the right angle so that in deep water, they spread out to give the boat a more stable footing on the bottom. Now here's another look at how quickly Emil can position the boat and drop the spuds into position. Once the spuds are down, the boat stays right there. It doesn't sway to the left and then to the right, and it doesn't drift an inch its way downstream. A real innovation that helps Emil Dean keep his boat just above the holes that hold those big steelhead. Emil, where'd you get the idea for these spuds? I've never seen another boat with these. Well, the idea, the reason we got the idea was we had a weight problem with an anchor on here, mm -hmm. which takes about 300 pounds. Well, you mean the anchor, anchor would have to be 300 pounds to hold right. this boat? Right. 
Now, but by going to spuds, you do away with the weight problem. And besides that, once you drop the spuds, you're where you're going to be. You're not, the wind's not going to move you back and forth. So we're not going to shift at all in this not a bit. where we're fishing? No, we're going to set right here. Why, why are we fishing here? Why'd you stop us here? Well, because we've got a warm creek here coming in. It's putting warm water in the river. Oh, right there. Yep, and we've got a deep hole behind us, and that's where the fish should be laying. So this uh, steelhead would come up here to spawn then? Right. Staying anchored above the holes and pockets is essential to the drop-back fishing technique. Amo keeps a huge inventory of lures on board, flatfish, tad polys, hot and tots, and river runs primarily, but there are those days when spawn seems to be the only producer. Now here's your, what, this is your, your favorite river rig, right? That's what I've read in your articles is the one that you recommend. We've got a bait casting reel with a flatfish, gold flatfish. Right, that's old standard. Okay. Uh, what is it, about 15, 20 pound test line? It's 20 pound test, breed to Dacron. Okay. However, you've told me we're not using lures today. Right. The reason we're not, these fish are, are laying in the holes, deep holes, getting ready to go up the stream, so... So we'll use spawn. We'll use spawn today. Okay. How do you rig up spawn for fishing in the river? Well, <clears throat> first of all, you have to tie yourself a dropper knot in there. Like so. For the sinker. For your sinker. A bell sinker. What does that weigh about? Uh, that's about an ounce, probably. Okay. And I tie it in a loop so you can change it quite readily, because when you go from hole to hole, uh -huh. you've got different current, you've got to be able to change it. And then you go up, oh, 25 to 30 inches. Okay. What and size hook? That's a number four. Number four. And you put on, you don't use single legs in the river, you use... No, we use uh, green spawn, and we try to use it, use it still in the skein yet. Okay. Hook that on there. Show us how you hook it. It takes a, it takes a big gob. Just hook it on like so. And that's been treated in borax? Treated in borax, right. You take in water, harden it when you first take it out of the fish, and put it in borax, and then... Okay, now something. I've read about your drop-back technique, which right. you use on the Manistee and on the St. Joe. All right, we'll use the same method here with a spawn. We'll drop it out behind the boat, and let it go to bottom. How much line should I let out? Well, in this case here, 10 feet or so, just so it touches bottom there. Okay. And then once it hits bottom, just pick it up about a foot at a time. Foot, and you pick your rod tip up about a foot, let a little bit of line, and you'll feel your sinker hit bottom again. Uh -huh. okay. Just keep repeating that. Walk, just walk it right back along the bottom. How long do I leave it sitting in one spot? Oh, not over this way here, not over five or ten seconds. Just long enough to touch bottom and pick it back up again. Mm -hmm. You see, you're not moving that near as far as you would a lure. Mm -hmm. Like if you were running a lure, for example, you'd run it about three foot. But when you pick this up and drop it, it won't go over a foot at a time. So you just keep picking it up and dropping it back. Until when? When do I stop? Well, until the fish hits it or you can't feel bottom anymore. But uh -huh. it's real necessary that you feel bottom each time you drop the sinker. Okay. Okay, you feel it? Yeah. yeah. Now, when the fish hits, are they going to hit it hard? Or no, not normally. They'll just usually peck at it. Once in a while they'll hit at it. But <clears throat> when, now, when they, they peck at it, I should set the hook right away? No, you should drop your rod and let them have it for till they peck it a couple more times and set your hook on it. Okay. What are we going to expect in the way of fight? Well, they're not going to they're not going to jump much this time of year because you've got 37, 38 degree water temperature. Mm -hmm. But they'll fight pretty hard. <clears throat> and when you get one on, of course, we'll have to lift the spuds and pull the boat out of the hole and try to get him out of the brush because you've got like brush in behind you there. And they'll try to get in there if they can. Now, how how long would we fish this hole? If there's no fish in it, how long will we fish <clears throat> this hole? We won't fish the hole over 20 minutes if we don't get a hit. We'd run mm -hmm. it through it. If I'm sure we went through it the right way, and we haven't had a hit, we'll move and go somewhere else. Okay, well, we'll give it 20 minutes, all right? All right, 20 minutes. Steelhead fishing isn't easy. The fish are temperamental. They don't always hit the spawn hard. What we're waiting for is a little tap, tap on the line, sort of like a perch wrapping the bait several times. We also have to make sure we feel the bottom as we bounce the sinker down through the deep holes. Oh, we're gonna catch fish, but first, let's pause for this message. How much pressure should I keep on him, Abel? Keep all you can on him. You got a good long rod there. Yeah, keep the rod up if he takes off. Now, when you get him in close to the boat, why don't you back up a little bit? Please. Okay. You have to get him in where I can net him. He's behaving good so far. Now, he hasn't jumped like well, a... They don't usually jump this time of year. Once in a while, you get a jump out of one when it's this cold. You gotta remember this water is only 37, 38 degrees. Now, should I bear pressure into him or should I just let him? Uh... No, just keep pushing down. Okay. Man, he's ready yet, is he? This one has to He's moving on you. Yeah. Now we're 
a pretty good kid for his first name. Yeah. Yeah, he's moving on out. Oh, in good shape now. Okay, so he's going to come out in the yeah, current. Come right out, shoot, come out behind us. See, we're getting this quiet water. Here. So it doesn't seem like with the way the drag is set that I should pump him too much. Well, look, when you're pumping him, as you go down, pump down, and as you lift on him, put your thumb again. It's just oh, so okay, easy. okay. Just, just hold your thumb easy again. Okay. Then he goes to run. But yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. okay, now that's I can. Nurse, yeah, but I want to keep that line tight. Right, yeah. All the time. Yep, that's right. Coming up now. So if I lose this fish, it's it's not going to be because of a snag. It's because that's I'm... That's right. Yeah, because we're getting free now. We've got him out in the river. Good fish. Mayo. There he comes. Yep, Mayo. got the line wrapped around Yeah, he's wrapped too now. You know, when you get him in close, you're going to have to back up a little bit. Okay. Ah, there, the line came loose. There he goes. There he goes. Okay. A little more line. Yeah. Okay, this is... Uh... All right, hey. Okay. Well, there's the prize, the steelhead trout, the fish that brings anglers out in the middle of the winter to fight the cold and snow and ice just for the chance to land a beauty like this. But each day as the waters warm up in late March and April, more and more Michigan anglers will be heading for the spawning rivers to pursue this beautiful fish. A heck of a fish. Well, Emil, how long did it take us to get this? Oh, what, 15 We've been minutes? 15 minutes out here on the river. <laughs> Outstanding. Hey, you can't beat that. Yeah, but that don't happen every time. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Put them on the scale here. Let's see what he weighs. Emil, about how many fish is this you've gotten this year, this season? Oh, I couldn't say. I don't really keep a record of them. Okay, but you're a pretty good judge of fish, right? Right. And fish weight? I would say pretty. Okay, go ahead. Tell me how much this weighs by looking at it. He weighs 8 pounds. 8 pounds? Well, it says here about seven. Seven? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Pretty close. <laughs> Outstanding. Okay, well, let's get the lines back in the water, eh? Sure. Sometimes when it rains, it pours, and it wasn't but a matter of minutes after I landed the seven and a half pound male that John Clevenger hooked another one from the same hole. Now, he's really an ace steelhead fisherman when it comes to fishing with spawn. He walks the bait over the bottom, feeling every inch of it through his fingers. He hooks the fish at just the right time and plays it with confidence. And I, for one, learned an awful lot by fishing next to John. This is one beautiful steelhead, a silvery female that displays all the beauty that a steelhead trout has when it's fresh from the Great Lakes. This one went a full eight pounds, and outdoor writer Ken Darwin, who joined us for this expedition, has the makings for another good fishing story. Well, John, that is a dandy female you've got there. Nice and silvery. She probably came into the stream, what, after the male did? Probably after the male, yeah. He's That's been in it. the stream a little been longer. A little longer. Too. Both about the same size, though. Boy, beautiful fish, beautiful fish. Emil, you did a heck of a job. That drop back technique has me convinced. I'm glad of that. You're glad of that. <laughs> he has a lot of satisfied customers. Well, I tell you, steelhead fishing like this is an awful lot of fun from a boat, or you can do it from waders, too. A lot of fishermen do wade in streams. And if you're interested in uh, getting outfitted for steelhead fishing with waders and some good rods, hey, Meyer Thrifty Acres has some deals for you this week. There are several ways of going about fishing for steelhead in Michigan, and this spring, one favorite way will be fishing from shore. 
A lot of surf fishing is done around the state. You see, the steelhead make their spawning run in the spring, unlike the salmon that are fall spawners, and they're attracted to almost any stream that is emptying into the Great Lakes. It's a good way to get out there. You can fish in the Great Lakes or you can fish in the streams, but if you have a boat, you're going to want to stick to the bigger rivers, the St. Joe, the Kalamazoo, the Grand, Père Marquette, the Big Manistee on the west side. About the only one that's large enough on the east side is the Osable but there are quite a number of good steelhead streams around the state, not navigable for larger boats, but they're dandy for fishing from shore. Now, again, standing off offshore, getting out in the water with a pair of waders, casting into the surf is one good way, but also fishing in the streams. Now, there are three favorite streams of Gary Marshalls. Gary works for the Michigan Travel Bureau, and he prefers the Platte River off Platte Bay, fishing along the sandbar, Whitney Drain and Lake Huron, just above Aw Gray, called Singing Bridge, Whitney Drain, that's excellent. And for the UP, Thompson Creek is a good bet. Now these are Gary Marshall's favorite hot spots. He says you can catch them there. And he also has a number of tips and techniques, and he's going to share them with us right now. Well, normally what I wear is uh, I wear the red wool for my hunting uh, outfit, and I also have a pair of insulated underwear. So I have my insulated underwear, I have my red wool pants, and then I put the waders over it. And unless uh, it is uh, raining hard or snowing hard, or if you take a little bit of water over, over your uh, waders, you'll find that uh, this will probably be uh, warm enough to weather any of the, the icy, chilly, cold water at that time. Gloves, now that's, there are, I've tried all kinds of gloves. Probably the best method uh, is not to use gloves. Now this is, uh, this is really cold, but uh, I've tried cotton gloves where I've, I've uh, cut the fingers off. I would have to recommend that this will work. Uh, just a pair of old brown inexpensive cotton gloves with the tips of the fingers cut off uh, will kind of keep the wind from uh, biting your hand. This is my kind of fishing. You don't need the expensive boat. You don't need the downriggers and the graph. Uh, actually, all you're using uh, will be, as we mentioned, a pair of waders and, and a, a rod, something in the oh, eight and a half to nine foot class. Uh, open face spinning reels, closed face work good. So I would say that just about uh, any type of rod or reel, I've seen all kinds of combinations, but just a, a nice, comfortable rod that a person may use bass fishing or, or pike fishing can also be used for catching steelhead. When the terminal tackles, uh, when you talk about main line, you're going to be running this is the line that is on your uh, reel. Now, this will be hooked to a, a two-way swivel or a three-way swivel, utilizing the egg sinker or the uh, sliding uh, sinker. From there, you'll probably want to run about uh, six feet, maybe eight feet of uh, some four-pound if you, if you want to try the four-pound, or you'd want to uh, maybe stick with six or eight-pound. Hook size. Uh, I usually use anywhere from a 10 to a 12, uh, and again, this depends on the style of the hook. Uh, there's many different styles, many sizes, but it's a relatively small hook. And you'll find at this time of year that the fish don't peck, peck, bite, bite. They, they inhale the, uh, the cluster of eggs. So you don't have to worry about the size of the hook because when you, when you hook the fish, usually that small hook will do the job. My way of, of fishing uh, steelhead is to use spawn. Now spawn comes three ways. Either you get them tied up into a spawn sack, uh, you use chunk spawn or, or clusters they call it, or the single egg method. Now the single egg method is a very deadly method. This is just using one salmon egg on a hook. Uh, treble hooks is another way. Uh, number eight, number ten treble hook is a way that some people can take a, a, a cluster of spawn and put it uh, on this hook. You, you more or less embed the hook into the cluster. Uh, and just throw it out and let it lay on bottom. Uh, this is an excellent way of, of taking fish. Uh, it, generally this time of year, the fish are, as I've mentioned, are close to the river mouths and try to fish in the current. Look at the current. See which way the current is flowing. This will be determining on which way the wind is blowing. Uh, the fish will have a tendency to be hanging around in the flow of the stream. This is the area that the fish will, uh, will be hanging. Uh, if you're in an area that, uh, let's say, is rocky, or maybe we've got some weeds that's laying on the bottom of the, of the lake, take, uh, take these miniature marshmallows and take this marshmallow and you bite it in half. 
and you take a part of this marshmallow and you put it on the hook. The biggest effect is the flotation. This will float it up off the bottom. But if you're going to use the marshmallow with spawn, be sure that you have a small uh, BB shot or some type of weight, oh, three, four, five inches up from the hook. Because without that, the marshmallow will float the bait right up to the top of the water, and so uh, very few steelhead will take it off the top, whereas they will take it on the bottom. When a, when a, a steelhead of, of size anywhere from four, six, and into November, now we're going to be talking, especially a plat bay, uh, we're going to be talking a steelhead up to 18, 20 pounds. And you may be just sitting there holding your rod. Uh, there are people that will put them in rod holders. I prefer to hold my rod because I want this field fish to, to come in and grab it. And it's almost like uh, you've hooked into a torpedo or, or a small whale because when they hit it, they, they're on immediately. They, they're out of the water, they're on their tails, they're jumping, they're splashing, they make some fantastic runs. Uh, and this, uh, this is why I think the steelhead is, is ranked so high among all the fish. Uh, they're an excellent fighter, they're a flashy uh, fish, and above all, they're excellent eating. Well, we're going to be right back to see Gary Marshall catch one of those tail-walking steelhead right after this short message. A lot of Michigan anglers consider the steelhead trout to be the king of game fish. It fights on its tail spectacular aerial battles. When I was filming with Gary Marshall a year ago up in Platte River, one of his favorite spots, we, I filmed one of those battles. You probably recognize it as the open and the close of the show. Here it is in its entirety. Michigan Weekend is brought to you by your one-stop shopping store, Myers Thrifty Acres, the place you can buy all your sporting goods and outdoor gear at why pay more prices. Of course, Meyer hopes you can get outdoors this weekend. It's a great place to be, great place to get out and fish, hunt, camp. Next week on Michigan Weekend, we're going to talk about bass fishing, some spectacular bass fishing footage, so join me, won't you? Next week, right here for Michigan Weekend. <laughs>